<laughs> so this is the uh, program I made yesterday and finished today. I actually made a video of it yesterday. I made this whole tutorial thing. But it turns out it was extremely buggy and totally broken. So if you're interested in making it, that's what this video will be about. But if you just want this script itself, this is uh, how it's used. So you double, there's also a, um, there's a mouse repeat and I'll also include the mouse click repeat. Let me turn down this music a little bit. And the mouse click repeat is essentially the same thing, but it's just, uh, it just clicks so it doesn't follow mouse movements and therefore it's a lot cheaper, a lot, a, lot, uh, a lot less intensive on the system. So you open the mouse repeat system, uh, press, just says all the instructions there anyway, press control R to record and control E to execute, escape or stop the recording or playing and close the, oper close the app entirely if there's no operation active. So if I press Control R, click to start recording. So I actually won't record any of this, and then we'll click, disenchant, disenchant, and then I'll press Escape to stop the recording. And then you can press E and iterate through it any number of times, or just leave it blank for infinity. And you'll see it'll just iterate through that and just keep doing it. So this is quite useful for, well, this is my purpose. I, I made it just for this, really, just to disenchant all these skins in League and escape to see, end the sequence and escape ends again to exit the application so if that's all you want I'll put a uh, download link in the description uh, but for those who are interested in coding it I will get into that now so here is this I'm not gonna do it from scratch as I do with a lot of my stuff because this is hopefully just gonna be a short tutorial it took me a good like four hours probably now just learning the language and um, just making this whole thing, putting pieces together and just figuring out how it works. Obviously when you learn a new language it's a bit tough, but uh, it's not too big a deal once you enter it. Mainly, my biggest issue with these things is how you set, how you assign something, it's not just equals that, it's uh, colon equals because equals is only used for check instead of double equals. So yeah, that led to loads of issues, but I'm not going to go into all the errors otherwise I'd be here all day. So starting out, that's just the description of what it does. Uh, we've got the sequence variables. Uh, I've decided uh, I've defined a sequence as that whole thing you saw so from the control to the stop recording. Sorry, from the record to the stop recording. That's one sequence, and you can iterate through that. So it, it stores um, the way it works is it stores the x and y coordinates of the mouse, and then whether or not the mouse is pressed down, so a click, a left click, and it does that for any number of frames, which is what this i is. And so far it's just 0 and 1 for left click, but you could expand it. And it does that based on this I number, which is how many frames there are. Uh, there's also a timer that cuts off the beginning, so we'll get into that. And of course the iterations to see how long it plays for. And then just the um, whether it's recording or playing. We start off with the auto execute function, which th I didn't know about before if you saw the last video. It actually uh, does this at the beginning. I was having a lot of issues. Again, I'm not going to go into the issues, but you need to do this. Otherwise, the co current coordinate mode by default is window based instead of screen based. So it will click only inside the window as opposed to the absolute value of the screen, which means if you uh, do a recording and then click out of the window before you play it, the mouse will go everywhere. It'll be very confusing, it closes a lot of stuff. So we just go chord mode, set the mouse coordinates. So when we whenever we use a um, mouse move or um, mouse get position, that's what we're doing here, and we'll set that to screen. We'll also just make a message box, and I'll show you the format here. So message box. There's no uh, functions. There's no brackets as far as I know. You just do commas. So message box of type zero, which is just an OK button at the bottom that you saw. The title is mouse repeat, and this is the whole message and you can also put another comma and another variable at the end which will be the timeout so how long it shows on the screen then we get into the actual coding so this is how you indicate a hotkey with uh, these two dots i believe and then this uh, is for control 
that's I think it's called carrot or, or carrot. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, Control R opens a message block that says click to start recording, skip to stop. Sets playing to false, sets recording to true. We reset all the variables here because we need to make sure to reset them. Otherwise, um, when we check them later on, they won't work. And then while recording is equal to true, which is up here. I should just make it a bit easier and just set it down here just so you know it's uh, clearer to see. While recording is true, every frame, which I've described as 30 milliseconds, it was 10, but it was quite intensive on the system. The mouse would move. You could even make this lower, make it 40, but whatever you do, make sure it matches. So if I set it to 40 here, I have to make sure it actually matches the time here. So you could use a variable for that, but I'm not going to. So every frame, we get the mouse position. Remember, we're getting it from the screen. And we store the X position and the Y position in these two arrays. These are two arrays of uh, floats or integers, I'm not entirely sure. And then we just set the mouse value to zero for now. We set that later. And then we iterate through. But we also do this, which is if start timer is running, we increment the timer. And this will basically, we set this to false down in the click. So the first time you click, the timer stops. And what that allows us to do is later on, we just minus the we just start at the timer frame so we skip all the frames below that we start at the first click six minutes in all right i'm gonna try and power through this because god knows how many times i have to do it again when this one's inevitably also broken um uh if start timer running is equal to true so if we never clicked if we never clicked it says recording failed you have to click to start and we set i equal to zero just because uh, we have an error here if they try and play i equals zero so that'll trigger that error and if not, we say recording completed. And uh, then we turn up, make sure recording is set to false. On the left mouse button down, this is very important, by the way. <laughs> I, I forgot, I didn't know this the first time. You either want a click function, um, this like just, just click, you can have this here. Or you want this send left mouse button down, and then correspondingly, you want a, a left mouse button up hotkey, and then send left mouse button up. And this will actually allow you, when the program is running, to still use your left click. Otherwise, when it's running, your left click just doesn't work, and it really, uh, really messes with you. It's not, uh, it's not easy. But uh, despite that, in this function, there is just this: if recording is equal to true, set the start time running to false. So as, as soon as you click it the first time, the, the as I said, the timer stops. And then what we do is set the mouse value at the current frame. Because notice that this i that it's iterating through is actually a global variable. We set the we set the current frame mouse value equal to one, so we know that we've clicked during that frame, if that makes sense. And we move on, again, send mouse button up to make sure the mouse button comes back up when you're just using it normally. And uh, Control-E is the next hotkey. If recording is equal to true, say we're still recording. If I, equals equal to, I is equal to zero, say there is no recording, you have to record on. Otherwise, uh, move forward with the actual thing. So input box is what you saw before, where you put in the amount of iterations you want. This is the output variable. So whatever the user types into here, it will be output to this variable, this global iterations variable. Um, it occurs to me that I don't need this to be a global. Yeah, that's a waste of time, isn't it? Yes, I don't need this to be global. I can actually just set this here. So if I put this above here instead, this should work just fine. Always editing code on the fly, like the professional programmer that I am. <laughs> so that'll set the iterations there. And then if the iterations is greater than or equal to zero, oh, sorry, I'm um, less than or equal to zero. So, uh, because um, essentially we're, we're, we're checking if it's not zero here. So if they've left it blank and it's been set to zero, we need to not, we need to be minus one. So if this is set to, zero or, or less than zero <coughs> we'll set, just set it to minus one and then we'll say it's playing infinitely otherwise we'll say it's playing uh, however many times they want it this is how you put a variable inside text with a percent sign on either side and then also playing equals to true uh, this is why we need to not have it as zero by the way because um this runs as many times this runs until a while sorry uh, iterations is not equal to zero this is a really easy, maybe cheaty way of allowing us to infinitely loop. Because if you'll see, we minus one from the iterations. 
So we say they put five iterations, I'll run through five times and stop. But if they put, if we have it set to negative one, as is, as we have done, if they've left it blank, then it will go minus one, minus two, minus three. It'll just keep going infinitely. So that's an easy way to make it loop infinitely. Here we've set L equal to I. Um, if you'll remember, I is the uh, the frame counter, and obviously once we finish recording, I is the total number of frames. So if we set L equal to I, that gives us how many frames we want to cycle through. Uh, so that's quite straightforward. And obviously we've got and playing equals true here. We need to have it here and here. This makes the sequence stop halfway through a sequence. And this, um, uh, if we didn't have this here, then infinite loops would never stop, right? Because it, it would never equal zero, even if playing wasn't true. Um, and we've got j equals to timer. This is what I was saying earlier. So we instantiate another variable that we can, this is our counter that counts up but we start it from timer, which is um, the first frame that they click. So we skip, skip all the previous frames. And I do believe the fir this, this uh, first frame does it always have the actual click installed. So when they click, that's the first, that click does go through, so they don't have to double click to start. While J is less than or equal to I, so when it um, hasn't reached the max number of frames and playing equals true, then we actually replay the uh, recording. So we set now, we get the values x equals, I don't know why I, ha I can't do this in line or I haven't done this line, I'm not gonna try it. I'm, it probably just works if you put pause j here, but it, uh, it's more readable this way either way. So we set a variable x and y here and then mouse move. I'm not even sure why these have to be in percentages, surely it's just a value, but this is how it works. <laughs> Again, no x, but literally just learned this the other day. And hopefully this takes you in 20 minutes, or 11 minutes, or around 10, 20 minutes takes you to where I got in like four hours. This isn't meant to be like a high level tutorial. Uh, so we move mouse move and remember this is all in screen space because we've actually set this in the auto uh, execute or the, which is essentially the start function or the main function. Dash main. So it's like it's auto, it's called the auto execute, but it's like the start, it's like the main. And we have to set this here, by the way, because um, it resets each time you go into a new thing. So every time you go into a hotkey, it would reset. And I think the default values are um, in window space, which isn't good for us for this uh, purpose. But you can always change it up there if you do want it in window space. But by setting it in the auto execute, you actually um, you don't have to worry about that. It's it's just, that is the default. Uh, it's set there entirely. So yeah, we move the mouse to the position that we recorded on each frame. So no matter where we are, no matter how the mouse moves, we always follow that frame every 30 milliseconds or 40 now, every 40 milliseconds is a frame. And then if mouse vals uh, J equals one, that's not an L, that's a one. This is just a very weird font. So if it's equal to one, then we click, uh, simple as that. So we, have the, we don't need to do like a click at a certain position because the mouse will already be there. We'll just click. And then uh, J++, so it just iterates through. So it keeps doing that. It does the entire sequence, and then it goes out and takes one of the iterations. So if you set five iterations, as I said, it'll go four, three, two, one, it'll do all five. If you set to minus one, I'll just keep going. Uh, either way, once we break out of playing, it will say sequence has ended. And uh, playing is false. And that's it. That's the entire script, other than the escape function, which just checks... Uh, if we're recording, set to false, so this is how you break out of a recording loop. This is how you end recording, or if playing equals true, playing equals false. So this is how you break out of other break out of a, just the sequence that you want to stop, or if it's infinitely running, that's how you would stop it. Uh, make sure to have the returns there so it doesn't just fall through. And then um, if nothing is running, if it's not playing or recording, then it says exiting application and it closes the application. And yeah, that's how it works. This one actually works, as opposed to the last one, which looked like it worked, but then had loads of random things wrong with it. Like this was broken and oh, just all sorts. In 15 minutes, time to spare. That's it, that's, that, that's, that's all there is. Um, I literally just made that to, <laughs> just to, I had, I had like 100 or 200 of these stupid champion shards because I'm, I haven't, I'm level 230 and I've never disenchanted the, the capsules until now. But yeah, that's it. This is above the stars for the people uh, still following. <laughs> the four dudes actually who care about this game. I've been working on it for like two and a half years now. Hopefully it's not too terrible. But um, yeah, it's, it's done now. It's finished. Uh, if it plays, oh god, it's, it's gonna crash already. Whatever. Anyway, um, 
hopefully I'd get a video on this out at some point, just as like a little trailer. It's all the effects, it's looking good. I do know some people are following it and are asking about how it's uh, how it's coming along. So yeah, it's totally done. I'm I'm actually redoing some of the voice acting, doing a bit more voice acting, just like anything, because I hate balancing. Just <laughs> really longing out the process. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. I'm quite quite happy with it. Hopefully, I might I might distribute on Steam and then move over to an ad-based mobile version after. But yeah, time will tell. Anyway, I'm rambling now. This has ran on for long enough, so thanks for watching. I hope it helped anyone looking into trying just getting started in Auto Hotkey. It does seem like a really powerful program. Uh, as I said, I'll also include this um, uh, on-click repeat function, which is the base. It's, a, it's just the same thing that you just saw, but instead of um, following the mouse, the timer, it just times the intervals between each click. And then you just, instead of saving the click up or down, it just saves the click value, like where was it clicked. So yeah, it's a lot It's a lot less complicated. So if you understood that first one, you'll understand this one. And I'll include both on the website. Again, thanks for watching and have a great day.